Hi, so my name is Lovey, and I'm excited to be here. Second time in BVI, first time in Roadtown. So today I'm talking about writing, blogging, my journey, and how it's kind of taken me places I never would have thought. So I was born and raised in Nigeria, and when I was nine, we moved to the US. First of all, nobody told me we were moving. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, <laughs> we usually go on vacation, we had gone to, on vacation twice before in the U.S., spent like two weeks. This time when we moved, my mom enrolled me in school, and I was like, oh, we're staying? And when we stayed, we lost touch with everybody. We weren't able to keep in touch. You know, you'd be like, we're going to stay connected. Again, I didn't know we were going permanently, so I didn't get to say proper goodbyes. We lost touch with a lot of people. One of those people, my first ever best friend. That was 1994 that we moved to the United States. And 13 years later, I'm on Facebook, and I see a message from a name I'd never forget. And it's my friend, Tomi, who was my first ever best friend. We've been best friends since we were three. I hadn't talked to her in 13 years, and she found me on Facebook. And I believe that was the first time I really was like, this social media thing, there's, there's some power here. It is the great connector. So, grown up since I was like five, if you asked me, what do you want to be? I'd be like, doctor, because I was smart, I was bookish, I was proud of it. And people projected on me and were like, you're going to be a doctor because you're super smart. And I was like, yes, I'm going to be a doctor. I was committed to that dream. That's what I knew. So I started college in 2002. I went to the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And my major was psychology pre-med. I fell in love with psychology. I think senior year of high school. And the pre-med piece, that commitment to the dream. And then chemistry happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second semester of freshman year, I took chemistry 101, which is the required chemistry you have to take if you're a pre-med major. I went to office hours. I got tutoring. And I got a D. I had never gotten a D before in my whole academic career. I got a D. So I was like, I need to have a come to Jesus moment with myself. <laughs> I don't even like hospitals. So <laughs> this whole being a doctor thing is probably not going to happen. So I dropped the pre-med. <laughs> I kept the psychology. But what I didn't realize was another dream was unfolding right before my eyes. So that same semester, my friends peer pressured me to start a web blog. Back then it was called web blogging. And it was on Zanga. It's this old platform that reminds me of MySpace. So I started this blog, and it was talking about my college life, all the random shenanigans I was getting into, who I wasn't, be, who I wasn't liking that day, exams I wasn't studying for. And this blog was just something that I, I just love to do, it was a hobby. So when I graduated from college, I deleted that blog because I was like, I've outgrown this. I'm going to move to Blogspot and upgrade. And I started what is now awesomelylovey.com. That was August 2006. So that blog, I started talking about pop culture, Hollywood, random adventures, less about my personal life. And it was interesting because I switched once I hit this mark in my life, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade my writing, and I did. By day, when I graduated, I was a marketing coordinator for a nonprofit in Chicago. By night, I would come home, and I would write, sometimes once a week. But once a week became twice a week. Two comments from my friends who read my blog became 20 comments from perfect strangers who didn't know who I was. So this thing was getting traction. And I kept on writing. I kept on writing, expected nothing. 2009, I think, is when like, the tides kind of turn. You know when you can pick a time when like, you go from here to like, here a little bit? That was that year for me. So in that year, I won my first ever award. And it was the Black Web Blog Award in the popular category for best humor blog. I didn't even know my site was popular. I just thought it was my friends just reading it, and then a couple of other people. But when I won this, I was like, oh. People are paying attention. That same year, I started the Red Pump Project, which is a blogging campaign to get our, my blogger friends to talk about HIV and AIDS and how it affects women. Um, me and my friend Karen 
got together to come up with this idea because we both know people who are affected by the epidemic. So on March 10th, 2009, 135 bloggers joined us to do that. This thing that started the campaign became a national organization. So 2010. At this point, I've been blogging for seven years. Yes, seven years. I got laid off my full-time job. I was like, oh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> but it was really the universe pushing me to take the leap of faith I wasn't going to take myself. I like checks. OK, I like knowing where they're coming from. Every two weeks, coming, no. I got laid off my job, and all of a sudden, I'm like, OK, what now? How I kept my head above water was because of my marketing background, my communications background, I was able to teach other people how to use social media and how to do what I've been doing for a while for themselves. So it kind of kept me afloat. But here's the thing, it wasn't enough to keep me like my shoe habit together, OK? <laughs> it wasn't shoe habit money. It was like, OK, you're not homeless money. All right. <laughs> but I kept on writing. One year later, I realized more people were paying attention to the site. Brands started hitting me up and saying, hey, we want to work with you. But I thought, why am I doing this if I'm still struggling? Why am I still writing every single day or writing this little blog when I can still, I still don't have enough cash to like really live? But quitting was not an option. Because every single time I would want to quit, I would get a note from somebody who reads my blog who's like, hey, yeah, so reading your blog while I was sitting in the waiting room as my mom got chemotherapy is the reason why I wasn't crying. Or somebody who emailed me and said, reading your blog was the first time I was able to smile in six months as I was going through a depressive episode. And then my oldest reader, who I think is my oldest reader, 92 years old. Oh. <laughs> She's been reading my blog since 2007. She was losing her vision. And as she lost her vision, she told her granddaughter, I need you to call me whenever Lovey updates her blog so you can read her blog post to me. So anytime I'd be like, why am I doing this stuff? And spending 16 hours a day behind the computer screen and wearing ratty pajamas four to five days a week and having to get a $4,000 loan to get my wisdom teeth pulled because I didn't have insurance. Why am I doing this? I had this small but dedicated audience that loved my shenanigans, but they were very committed to also let me know that my writing mattered to them. And I really thank them. I call them Love Nation because, well, they gave themselves a name. You know how, like, everybody, Beehive for Beyonce, Rihanna has the Navy, I have Love Nation. And they call Love Nation the Beehive of blogosphere. No, no. <laughs> They're the fierce and fabulous people who are like, yes, we stand for lovey. But in writing this blog and staying true to myself, having no expectations, but realizing that I need to finally make some money with this, how was I going to do that? Well, so I got known for writing TV recaps. If you, re if you watch a major award show, you want to come directly to my website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to come to my website to read the tea that you missed, some of the ones you didn't miss, who, what wore, who, who wore what, who I was giving side eyes to. <laughs> My site got known for these recaps. And then in 2012, a show took the entire world by storm. Anyone know what that show is? Scandal. 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 Yes. Scandal started. And it had everybody going nuts. <laughs> OK, like you couldn't stop talking about Scandal. And I couldn't stop talking about Scandal. So I was live tweeting it when it would come on. And the day after, I would recap it on my website. My website became known as like the water cooler conversation place. This is where you go after watching Scandal, and then you come read what you just watched. But I tell you what you might have missed, including the colors. Did you know how they use color in Scandal? Yes, I get deep, all right? <laughs> These recaps made my blog spike. Like It took my blog to a new level. People who hadn't known who I was, found me because of Scandal Recaps. They might have stayed to read the stuff that I was writing about police brutality and race and feminism, but I slid them in with Scandal. And while I had them, I talked about other things. 
Twitter also became a huge part of the work that I do because of live tweeting. So anytime there's a TV show going on, instead of sitting at your house watching it by yourself, you can be watching it at home but feeling like you're with everybody else because we're all tweeting about the same thing. So my tweets got major. So big that one day I'm live tweeting Scandal. I think it was, I, had, I was traveling, so I didn't have a chance to watch it live. That's when I typically, I'm writing about it. But this day was like a Saturday night and I hadn't had a chance to watch it, so this is my chance to watch it. And as I was tweeting, Shonda Rhimes tweets and says, I am staying up to watch Lovey live tweet Scandal. I was like, mama, I made it. <laughs> she is staying up to watch me talk about her show. I was like, okay, we're doing something here. But Twitter in particular though, I feel like my life is a series of tweets come true. I feel like I predicted everything that's about to happen on Twitter. And I usually go back after a major thing that happens with me to search my tweets to see if I've actually predicted it. Three major things <laughs> have happened or are in motion that I've actually said about, uh, that I've talked about on Twitter. So first thing, in August 2014, I woke up one day and I had five messages waiting for me from people, from members of Love Nation, who were like, hey, I just read something that sounded like you wrote it. And I was like, all right, send me the link. They sent me the link. And it was this piece on a major university's website by a journalist. He had plagiarized three paragraphs of my work wow. and dropped it in his, had, gave me zero credit. So you would have thought he wrote it. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I read, I said this. So I commenced to do a multi-platform dragon. Like I dragged this dude by his <laughs> eyebrows on Twitter, on Facebook, on my blog. Like I had to take a nap because I dragged him so hard all day. Like I was exhausted by the end of it. I was like, whew, took a nap, woke up from my nap to a message from him where he was like, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. Come on, like, okay, you didn't know you're not supposed to copy and paste somebody else's words and not give them credit? So I went on Twitter and said, is there not a limited edition handbook on how not to suck as a human? <laughs> and the moment I pressed publish, I was like, ooh, that's the book I need to write. So that's how I came up with the idea for I'm Judging You, The Do Better Manual, my first book that came out last September. Now, the tea with that is, that book ended up becoming an instant New York Times bestseller. Why? Because I had this audience that I had built on social and with my blog over at that point, let me see, that was 2014, 11 years. And they were like, this book is gonna be a success because you've been here for so long, you've been writing for so long, you're one of the people that we can count on to always give a take on pop culture. So that's how that, that happened. Two, because I'm a black girl, one of my heroes is close, Maya's mentee. Thank you. Come on. She's like black girl angel. <laughs> like, this like, come on, you know this. Oprah is like one of my sheroes, self-made entrepreneur, media figure, just a black girl who's super centered and sure about who she is. I've been in rooms with Oprah seven to eight times over the years. Like, we would be at the same event. I would be standing five feet from her, and I'd just be like, no, I'm not gonna meet her. At least five or six times. I've been to her show three times. I've always just been in her orbit, but I never felt compelled to introduce myself. So I tweeted probably twice over the year, or maybe three times that one day I'm going to meet Oprah, and when I meet Oprah, she's gonna already know my name. Wow. And I was like, that's when I'm gonna know that I've really arrived, and I'm gonna get some good luggage then, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, uh, I'm over here minding everybody else's business, and I get an email that I was chosen, handpicked by Oprah to be a part of her Super Soul 100 list. And it was a list of 100 people who she picked who she thinks are elevating humanity. And I got picked because of my voice, because of my blog, because of my social media, because who, the, the stuff that I've created over the last 13 years. So Oprah, ha first of all, I was like, wait, handpicked, like, as in she knows who I am? Oh my God, that's amazing. So I show up to the brunch, she did a brunch for the honorees. So this list has like Deepak Chopra, Ariana Huffington, 
Ava DuVernay, India Ari, Yala Van Zandt. And I was like, word? You picked me for this list? So we go to LA for the brunch, and I finally formally meet her in person, and she knows my name. And I'm like, I've already predicted this on the Twitter sphere. Yes. And then two months later, her team loved me so much, she loved me, that they had me come back to LA to interview her on the own TV lot while holding an own microphone. And it was broadcast on Oprah Winfrey's Facebook page, Own's Facebook page, Greenleaf's Facebook page. And during this interview, Oprah grabs my head, and I felt like I was anointed. OK? <laughs> I do. I was like, oh, we go together. Yes. Like, this is, I feel like I'm heir apparent. OK? We're going to say that. So that's number two. <laughs> number three, over some years, again, anytime something major happens, I've usually said it on Twitter. I've claimed it, and it's like the universe is like, I got you. So my book came out in September. When I'm judging you came out, I sent it to Chanda Rhimes, because at this point, we go together. Um, and I was like, I would love for you to blurb this book. Just, I want your quote on the cover of my book, if you love this book. She read it. A month before my book drops, she sends me a quote and says, this book is a truth riot. I was like, oh, that's deep. So the second edition of my book had Shonda Rhimes' quote on the cover. And then in October of last year, I get a message from Shonda. She wants me to come meet with her. I meet with Shonda Rhimes, and she says, I think this is a television show. February 7th of this year, it got announced publicly. I'd been sitting on it for two months at this point. Shonda Land optioned my book to become a cable series. So I am working with Shonda Land now to develop the show. So of course I went back on Twitter and was like, I predicted it, this and that. I did, I did. So I found three tweets, from 2012, one from 2012, one from 2014, one from 2015 that said, one day you will see my name in the credits of your favorite TV show. It was the exact same tweet and I said it three times over the years. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't even know. I spoke that into existence. But it was the power. I really believe in the power of writing and speaking our dream. And essentially, because I'm on social all the time, I share my dreams publicly. And I feel like sometimes the courage to just speak them out loud is what you need to kind of set it in motion. I never was that person until it started happening. And I didn't realize it was happening. Blogging, social media, the success that's come from it for me has actually like blown my mind. Like it's, it's open doors that I didn't even know existed. Like, there's one thing to see a door and say, I want that to be open. But there's another to not even know it was there. And my, like, I'm standing here as a testament of that power of just what these platforms can do. Because you never know who's listening, who's paying attention. Red Pump Project, which is my organization, is now eight years old. We have went to, we went to uh, Haiti in December 2015 because, um, the US Embassy in Port-au-Prince was like, we want you to come here and do the work that you do here. And we got to do workshops for 900 people in four days. Awesomelylovey.com, my blog, has gotten me in these crazy rooms. I always say I'm Forrest Gump. Can you know how Forrest Gump ended up in all these weird rooms? And you're like, how? I'm that person. <laughs> There's many times when I'm the only blogger in a room. I'm the only one they gave access to. There are times when I've been on the red carpet next to journalists from the BBC. I was on a red carpet last year where I was in a better position than a, than a multi-million dollar outlet, as in like my name on the carpet was better than where their name was. And the person there was like talking to a PR person like, usually I'm here. And the PR person's like, not today. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, blue. <laughs> and here I am, a team of one at this point literally in a better position than you who comes from an organization that probably has a $30 million budget. I, the petty in me loved that moment. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I was like, look at God. Come on. I did. I was like, this might be a picture of me looking at him like this, having on that red carpet. <laughs> it's like when I was t at the Ac Academy Awards in 2012. Like, typically when you see journalists on the red carpet after the, the Oscars, they leave. Most of them have no access to get backstage. I got backstage. So I spent the whole time eating Wolfgang Puck's uh, shrimp, and I didn't do no work backstage. I was already like, yes, I'm back here. I will eat all the chocolate. <laughs> 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 
all of it. But again, this access that I get is strictly because of this thing that I've built. Like the power of it, it always blows my mind all the time. People are like, how did you get there? I've been doing this work for such a long time. Am I a success though? I also get that question. For me, success is living life on your own terms and doing the things that you love. And every single day I get to do that. So I do think I'm a, I'm a success. And you know, even the times when the money wasn't coming in, when it finally started coming in, I was affirmed in the work that I was doing. And I feel like as creatives, as people who don't always live in the box, that's the most difficult thing, is knowing to keep going even when you hit these walls, especially when you can't afford to buy the shoes you want to buy, because that's my motivation. Um, <laughs> I have to admit, OK, I'm shallow like that. <laughs> But for me, I also find a lot of power in the fact that I can, I'm usually one tweet, a blog post, a status away from my dream door being opened. Mm -hmm. And my, my hope for everybody else is that they're able to harness these social networks and, and these, these, these websites and one that you created yourself and one that somebody else created that you're writing for. My goal and my hope for other people is that they're able to find their power in it, stand in it, because I'm, I have a ball doing what I do, and it's just because I've stayed true to myself. I've done it for a long time, and I'm essentially the person who just didn't quit. Like, the party ended for some people, and they were like, okay, I'm going home. I didn't go home. I helped you clean up. So you're like, okay, I like you. I'm, 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 I'm going to support you. I'm that person for Blogosphere. So thank you for having me, and I am excited to be in BVI. Thank <laughs> you.